everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Hello, I'm Sarah Amos, welcome along. Great to have my regular viewers um, tuning in for the long-awaited wonky pot tutorial video. So um, I finally got myself into gear to um, do the full tutorial um, on how to make a, a wonky pot. So my wonky pots are so called because they are wonky. They are not a, a perfect um, shaped pot. They all have their own little personalities because the what happened was that I drew the template the first time and the first time I made the pot it came out wonky and I thought oh I'll have to redo that template but then actually I really liked the fact that they were slightly wonky it gives them a sort of a personality if you look at this one um, which um, has just this one's actually not for sale because it's mine um, so uh, this one has sort of uh, slightly more comical feet and then I quite like this staple um, across the join in the slab. Um, it almost makes it look like it has a face. Um, so I quite like the fact that the pot is wonky, as you can see. Um, and then when you pop it on its feet, it gives it some sort of personality. And obviously you can have a go at theming your wonky pot however you like. I mean, you could put eyes and a nose um, on it and you could even put, you know, proper little feet on it. To make it look like a person so um, you can do all sorts with your own creativity this one is um, the slab has been mono printed um, and there is a playlist of mono printing videos if you would like to have a look at those um, this one has been uh, luster fired so it has a um, if i take the plant out it has a luster finish on the um, glaze so it's been glaze fired and then luster fired and there are a couple of kiln openings with luster firings um, and the lovely thing about wonky pots being raised from the table surface is that they do look lovely with a draping plant um, in them so that's kind of this one is actually the one that lives in my studio this trailing plant um, and it, it just looks fantastic in in the wonky pots when they're when they're sat on the side Right, so without further ado, and to get on with it, I have rolled out a slab with the slab roller and I have compressed the clay on both sides of the slab um, just by using a rubber kidney. This one is a Mud Tools Yellow. I quite like the flexibility of this, um, this rib. Um, so I'm just recompressing the clay uh, and then I'm going to use my wonky pot template. Now I am going to be um, uploading the template onto my Etsy shop. So if you would like to buy the original and best uh, wonky pot template, then head over to the Etsy shop. There is a link in the description to my Etsy shop if you'd like to go and have a look. Um, they're not terribly expensive, but unfortunately the postage and packing over to America is a little bit expensive so I do hope that it's not priced them so high that people can't actually get hold of one so I'm going to place the template onto the clay and cut that out for um, my first stage of doing this make So I've cut out the two pieces, the base piece and the wall piece. Um, and then I'm going to, on this particular one, I'm going to use some of my um, homemade bisque stamps. So these have just been made out of clay. Um, again, there are some sets on my Etsy shop, but most of them have now sold. But if you'd like to take a look, you'll find that there are some uh, ceramic stamps on the Etsy shop. Um, but you can make them very easily yourself by decorating your own um, 
clay and then bisque firing it and then obviously they're used in their bisque state. Um, I do tend to um, decorate the bottoms of the wonky pots um, only because um, I can really. I mean I know nobody's going to see it um, so I'm just going to spend a few minutes just popping on um, some random texture over the top uh, section and the base section of this wonky pot um, just to just to texturize the stamp because I quite like the way that the um, glaze interacts with the uh, texture from the stamps so I'll get on and do that <music> so I have put the texture onto the pieces and now I just need to um, recut round the template because obviously where I have pressed into the clay this is now not the same shape as it was when I first cut it so I'm just going to put the templates back on and um, and recut so we've recut them I'm quite happy with the texture um, I'm going to put my maker's mark onto the base at this stage whilst it's flat and I can use a little bit of pressure to um, push into the base with my maker's mark which I'll just pop on there so it's done and I'm not pushing into soft clay later on um, and I do just use a, this is a Garrity Tools rib. Um, I quite like the, um, the cube section on there to mark my, my signature. So it has my Pottery Corner logo um, and then I just like to put this sort of linear line on. So that's the first stage, okay? So we've got our templates texturized. Um, and the pieces are cut out and ready. And now what I'm going to do is leave those just to set up just for a little bit because they are quite soft at the moment and I don't want the clay flopping around. So, as Kerin said, what does in true Blue Peter style mean? Um, well, it means that I've been prepping and making another, making another version for you so that I can step that straight in. Okay, so I'm just going to pull across the one that I was working on earlier. Um, this one has been done with um, slips and um, monoprinting techniques, this, these um, slabs. As you can see, I've put my maker's mark on. I've also used some of the vinyl leaves um, that we've been talking about over the last few weeks that are made by my friend Karen. Um, and those are now available in her Etsy shop. So I will put a link um, in the description below to Karen's Etsy shop if you'd like to go and have a look at that. Right, so the next stage from here, from having your template decorated, your pieces decorated, I'm going to flip over the base and I'm going to flip over the um, side wall section and I'm going to use a mitre tool. Now I realise that not everybody will have a mitre tool um, it isn't absolutely necessary. You would just hold your knife at 45 degrees when you're cutting. Okay, but I'm going to use a mitre tool um, and I'm going to mitre the edge of the large section, the bottom edge, by holding the mitre tool against the slab and just running the wire along the edge of this um, bottom edge of the wall section. 
and what that does is it takes off the triangle so this is the piece that is coming off and it's triangular okay so that's just an easy way of mitering something rather than doing it with a knife but you can obviously do it with with a knife at a 45 degree angle I'm just going to take that bit off of there it just makes my life a bit easier um, and then I'm going to do the same round the whole of the base so I'm just going to pull the mitre off of there running the mitre tool around the edge if it gets caught don't worry about it it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but if you hold the tool against the edge of the slab it will um, it will come off there we go Oh, that bit that way. So we're left with a mitered edge on the base, like so, okay? So that's now got a mitre on it, and a mitre on the base edge of the, the bottom edge of the wall. Right, so I'm going to transfer this over onto a board. Um, and again, I'm putting the um, decorated side down. Um, and I'm on the top of a whirler because that just makes my life a bit easier. Um, I've got a serrated rib which I'm going to run round the mitered section of this slab, giving it a really good score to make sure that I've got a good attachment. Okay, so that's the base section scored. And then again, on the side section, for the time being, I'm just going to score the mitered edge on the long edge which will be obviously the bottom of the wonky pot so we're just making sure that we've got a really good score on there and then i've got um, my studio slip which is basically the clay body slaked down in water um, and i'm going to slip and join these two pieces together so i'll do that in front of the camera so I just get my slip, give it a generous amount, don't be shy with it. Slip doesn't cost you anything, it's made from all the little bits of dried up clay that end up on the studio table at the end of a session and it is your glue. So if you are shy with it, it will not stick. So make sure that you give it a reasonable amount of slip. So that's that section done and then I'm just going to do the same give it a reasonable amount of slip um, on this uh, mitered section on the bottom of the wonky pot to stick the two pieces together. Okay, so that's fine. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join those two pieces. So I'm picking up my slab. Okay, let's get rid of that. We don't need that. So we have our base and it's on the whirler. And I'm just going to feed, I'll do this in front of the camera, quite difficult, right. I'm going to feed the um, mitre, let me try and do that your way, feed the mitre onto the base. So I'm not trying to actually uh, fix it yet, I just want to feed it on so that I'm sure that it actually is touching rather than just being propped onto this base section so I'm just forming up where I'm going to do my attachment making sure on this bottom edge so on this bottom edge where my hand is that I'm pressing in to the base so that those two mitre sections are joined and then coming round I'm going to join the two pieces together and I'm just going to just fold those over there and cut. I'll do it towards you. I'm going to cut this, this section here again with a 45 degree mitre angle. So I'm taking off the triangle, if that makes sense to there and then I'm going to work out by folding the top one over the top where I need to cut the top section and again I shall cut that at a 45 degree mitre 
I don't want to cut it too short so I'm just going to cut through there like so and then I've got a nice large area here that I can score on both sides there and there as I say give it a good score don't be shy with making sure that you've given it something to stick to and again a nice dollop of wet slip just to make sure that we actually have attached those two pieces together and then I'm just going to feed that round and join those two on that 45 degree angle and what I'm doing inside is I'm just pinching it together just just gently obviously with a mono printed item I've got to think about the pattern here so I don't want it too smushed with loads of gooey slip so I'm just being careful to fold over the edge without making too much of a mess on the top of this slab. Um, so I'm just going to clean that up with a detailing brush. Just get the wet slip off of the front of this piece because it is mono printed. If it's not mono, mono printed, you don't have to be quite so careful, but obviously I've got um, the pattern of the slip on there. So I don't want to end up with um, a noticeable um, layer of slip. So what I have done is pinched it together on the front and then in the inside, if you can see, hope you can see that join. I haven't really done anything to it at the moment. It's just a bit of a mess. So I'm going to take my rib, same one, and I'm just going to press together, holding on the outside because I don't want to open that seam again. Press together the two pieces of that slab with a nice positive pressure so that you can't actually see where the two pieces were joined. So if I show you that now, you can see that those are joined on this section here. I hope you can see that. OK, I'm not too worried about the fact that this rim is deforming at the moment. It's not really um, causing me an issue. Now, um, because this is mono printed, the pieces that I've just taken off, I'm just going to use a small piece of um, clay and make myself a very, very small, thin sausage to reinforce the join at the base. OK, so I'm going to give it a good roll out until I've just got a fairly slim sausage. I don't want too much. I don't want a great big, huge width of sausage. It doesn't matter that it's broken. So I've got myself a reasonably small three or four millimeter sausage. The scoring that I did before is enough here to do and I'm just going to run a line of slip around the join between the wall and the base okay so in that bit at the bottom I've just put a line of slip in there and then I'm just going to put in this um, coil using a wooden tool I'm just going to move it out to the join and push it with my finger supporting from the outside so I'm not pushing the wall of the pot off. I'm just going to feed that sausage into the corner section where I want it. Just pressing it in lightly with my finger and again I'll show you that. So at the moment we have the sausage just on the base where the two are joining, okay? And then I'm going to use um, a wooden tool supporting again from the outside so I'm not pushing this sausage out. I'm just going to tack fasten it. So I'm just going to use the wooden tool 
just to make sure that that clay is pressed all the way around quite firmly so that I know that it's joined to the slip and it's not just floating in that section. I do want to make sure that it is attached to the floor. Okay, so let me show you that again. So I've just tack fastened that using the, the wooden tool and you can see it's kind of got little sort of beads in it where I've just attached it. And then I'm going to take a larger ended wooden tool um, which is, is a rounder, rounder version of the same thing. And then I'm going to just make that a nicer, prettier thing rather than leaving it looking like that. I'm just going to run this um, tool around so that I'm making sure that that coil is invisible. It's just taking off a little bit of the slip. I'll just get rid of that. Okay, and again, I'm just holding my hand on the outside so that I'm not pushing the um, slab away as I'm doing this. Okay, and then always a useful tool anytime our fingers. So I'm just going to go in with my fingers and just flatten that down. Spend a little bit of time in finishing off your joins. It will pay dividends in the long run. Makes your work look more professional. Even if it is for you, it's quite nice to make a thing that looks quite pretty inside as well as out. So that ends up looking like that. So you can't see the coil join at all. So that whole um, inner section is now um, reinforced with that little coil just so that we know that the, the base is actually attached to the wall. Now, so I'm just using my fingers just to stretch the clay out a little bit, um, which will give me a little bit more volume inside the wonky pot itself. So I just spent a little bit of time very gently just pressing this out from the base up the wall of the wonky pot and just stretch it just a little bit so that it's a, a slightly bigger pot. Okay, when it gets to here, I use a little bowl which just happens to be the perfect size to um, go into the top of the pot um, just to make sure that my top is round. Because quite often when I've spent a little bit of time um, bellying that out just a little bit, I sometimes smush the rim out and it, it becomes no longer round. So I've just popped in the top of there the bowl. Now I can't leave that in there for very long um, because as it dries, of course, it will contract. But I can leave it there for an hour or so and just let that set up. So that's as far as I want to go on here at this stage. So whilst we're waiting for that to dry a little bit so that it's not quite so floppy, I'm going to make the legs. So I've got here just a coil of the same clay body. It's a reasonably fat coil. I don't want them to be too skinny. But again, you can personalise your own wonky pot how you um, would like to. Put your own stamp personality. You could make bun feet. Um, you could make, as I said before, something with some character on it. Um, this is just um, a coil that's been looped at the bottom to leave a little, leave a little sort of space here. I quite like those. Those are quite nice. Um, but my routine um, way of doing legs is just, just with a coil. And I want them to be about two inches long. I'm just rolling out a coil. Um, and what I want it to be is slightly tapered. So I want the piece that's going to join onto the pot to be slightly thicker than the actual foot end at the bottom. So I've rolled out a tapered coil. So this end is fatter than this end. So it goes in a taper. And then I just need to make two more like that, or reasonably like that. So I'll just quickly taper that off and all of this can be done 
in readiness um, whilst you're waiting for your pot to set itself up. Try and make them relatively the same. You can be pedantic and um, weigh them if you want to, to make sure that you're using the same amount of clay. I personally don't think that that's necessary, but you know, if you are one of those perfectionist type people, you could certainly do that. So I have my three tapered coils, one, two, three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them the same length. So I'm putting the large end of the taper together. If I just show you this with the camera. So the large end is here and the narrow end is here. And then I'm going to cut all three through the long end, through the, the fat end, um, again, at a 45 degree angle. So I'm using that tape, that um, angle again to just cut off the tops of the coil. And again, I'm going to come down to where I want them to be using the same angle to about there and chop the bottom off. And what I'm left with are three coils, the same length. Okay, so those are now all the same, ready to go onto the pot. Okay, so we've let our pot set up for a little while with this um, bowl inside, just holding the rim round. And now what I want to do is I want to clean up the join on the underside where the two slabs have been joined together. So I'm just going to pick my pot up carefully, remembering that it is not by any means dry. Um, and then I'm going to just peel away the um, wear board underneath. Okay, oh, get that off of there. As you can see, it's covered in slip and what have you. Just turn the board over and then I'm just going to pop that onto the board. Um, so the base section, as you can see, where the two slabs are joined together, is um, is a bit messy so we need to tidy that up and the way that I'm going to tidy that is by using a paddle so I'm just going to start very gently paddling the side slab um, onto the base so I just want to make sure that there is a join between those two sections. We have obviously reinforced it from the inside, so we know that the join is secure. Uh, but right at the moment, all I'm trying to do is just paddle this down um, so that I've got a proper join here to make sure that that is A, a nice shape there, and B, that it is actually stuck on the top. And then I'm going to take my rib again my flexible rib and I'm just going to run around this edge which is still covered in fairly um, wet slip and just take that off of there because I don't really want all that wet slip on that join. You'll see that it's, it's moved out the edges again. So I'm just going to clean that up and then I'm going to get my paddle again and gently just run the paddle round. I'm, I am patting it, but very gently. I don't want at this stage to uh, move it out of the shape that I want it to be. So I'm not whacking it. I'm literally just giving it a nice soft tap just to clean up the join area and indeed just on the base okay so that I'm happy that that's quite a nice tidy section now you probably have noticed that this is starting to bow because it isn't actually um, set up so um, I am sort of slightly winging it for the video but when you do yours try to make sure it's just that little bit drier at this stage it won't hurt it to be a little bit drier so what I've done is basically just tidied up the base join here um, and then I am actually going to tip this back over so that um, this base can bow itself back out again because I don't want it to have a great big dip in the middle when I finish making it. 
Okay, so here is one that I made um, earlier this morning. Um, and this has actually almost set to leather hard. As you can see, it's no longer flopping on this top edge. It is actually dry enough for me to handle it without pushing it out of, um, out of true. And on this one, on the join, I've just made a feature of the join in the slab by just pressing a little textured button um, into the into the join so that it actually shows the join as a join rather than trying to hide it. And again, this one has been decorated using monoprinting techniques. And I've also used one of the Ellen transfers um, just to give it a little bit of something. So, you know, you can really surface decorate your pieces in any way you want. And again, I've used the button motif um, around the piece as well because that will that will look good with the glazing so I'm hoping that the glazing will hold in those slots so at this stage you have your base and your top section and you have refined this bottom edge of the join on your piece and you have your feet ready to go now these um, because I have used a mono printed piece of clay I've just used a piece of the mono printing um, clay so that it's not wasted um, down the side of the legs so that I need to make sure when I put these on the pot that that section can be seen. And I use basically I um, just to work out whereabouts I want to put my legs. Um, I'd, I quite like the leg to be within the body of the pot. In other words, it is not sticking out over the edge of the, um, of the pot once it's actually done. It is underneath the pot so that this line here is flush. So I quite like to make sure that the, um, the feet are in far enough that they will sit flush when they are placed. Uh, on the pot and not stick out past the edge of the pot if that makes sense so you have if you were to continue the line of your pot here I want to make sure that the feet are within that and that they're not kind of outside of that there so I do bring the feet in just a little bit um, and then I'm just going to kind of sort of look at the top of the pot and eyeball where I think the three legs need to be. Um, I, there isn't much of a science to it. I kind of just look at it and go, well, that looks about right. Um, you could be more scientific and use a protractor and work out your angles if you're a mathsy type person. Um, but for me, being a creativity type person, maths comes quite difficult. Right, so I'm just going to mark where my feet are using a knife. So I'm just going to just mark each foot round with a sort of a dotted line using my knife. So I know where the attachment points are going to be. They fall all over the place, as you can see. OK, and then I'm going to put that one there, that one there and that one there. So I know which foot's going where. Um, and then I'm going to again use my serrated kidney just to mark the attachment points and this time I'm going to double scratch. So I'm just cross hatching across that scratch just to make sure that I've got a really lovely surface for the attachment. And then I'm going to do the fatter edge of the feet because that's the bit that we are going to be attaching. And again, I'm going to scratch and cross hatch. The same as you would for a mug, a mug handle attachment. You need to make sure that you give it something to hold on to um, because if you don't scratch it enough, it won't have enough to hold it on and you'll find that your legs will fall off which is not terribly clever. Right, so at this point I need my slip and I'm going to slip the foot and the base of the pot. Remember which way round it goes and then I'm going to positively press and give it a wiggle 
so that I know that that slip is not just floating. The actual piece is attached to the base. I'm going to do that all the way around with all three. Let's just move that out of the way. So again, a nice bit of slip on the foot and one on the pot. And again, pop it on, give it a little wiggle and a press. Make sure it's attached. Like so, number three. Dab on there, dab on there. And again, I'm just checking because I have the um, vertical detail on these feet that the vertical detail is facing outwards. And it is, I'm just gonna wiggle that one. Okay, so this is now a nice slippy nightmare on the bottom of this pot. So I'm just going to use um, a detailing paintbrush and a piece of kitchen towel. And I'm just going to, I don't want a wet brush. I'm just going to take away that slip from around there. I don't want that marking my mono printing. So I'm just going to lift it off and get rid of it as much as I can around this section here and here. Right, so that I know that those legs are definitely not going to fall off, I'm going to use a very small coil around each foot. Almost nothing, but just a little tiny coil. No more than maybe two or three millimetres. Very, very fine. I don't want a great big smush of clay, so just a tiny little worm-like um, there's still a little bit of slip round there, so I'm just going to go round each foot with this tiny bit of coil. There's still enough slip there for me to stick that on with. Go around there. Tiny bit more for the third one. Okay, again. Um, this is important because these legs have to do a lot of work um, when the pot is actually standing on the legs. You do need to make sure that the legs are attached. At this point, I'm going to put my glasses on. So I'm just going to press the um, coil onto the pot like so, all the way around so that I know that it's not floating. I don't want it floating on there. It does need to be attached. I can take away any excess that I don't need. Um, and then I'm just going to make that look a bit prettier. Just take away some of the, some of the weight there. This task is made slightly more difficult by the mono printing design, but it's on the base, so I don't have to be too pedantic about it because unless it's on a high glass shelf, nobody's going to be looking at it, are they? So, and then I'm just going to blend in the top edge of the coil up into the leg. Do this really quickly whilst you're watching and again just going to use that wonderful tool the finger just to um, go around the edge and just smooth that a little bit you can take more time doing this I just want to attach one just so that you can see what it looks like at the end okay So the, the coil should be invisible at the end of it. You don't want to be able to see that a coil has actually even been added to that piece. Okay, so let's show you that. So this is the coil before it is attached properly. And then on this side, you can see that the coil has been amalgamated into the body of the foot the, the floor of the pot 
and up into the actual leg itself so that you have a nice attachment there. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on and do those last two feet. Okay, so we've now joined on the legs. Um, and again, I'm just going to sort of check the angles of the way that the legs are standing. Um, at the moment, I can't stand the piece on its legs because it probably would not hold the weight. So when I turn it over, I am almost taking the weight of the pot with my hand. If I were to let it go, I'm pretty sure the legs would come off. Um, but I do want to just check that the legs are splaying the right way. This one appears to be splaying out slightly further than the others. So I just need to bring that one back in a little bit. Um, and then I'm just going to let them sit for a little while just to set up until they're a little bit drier before I do anything else. And I'm just tweaking them just to make sure that I'm happy with the placement because once they have dried a little bit more, I won't be able to do anything else with them. So we're just gonna leave those to set up for a while. Okay, so we're back with our piece that's dried a little bit. The feet are a little bit more stable. It's been sat outside for about half an hour. Um, even so, I'm still not going to let it stand with its complete weight on its feet at this stage um, because it is not um, man enough to hold the weight of the pot above it. And indeed, when I'm firing my wonky pots, I always bisque fire them upside down like this with their feet in the air. When they are glaze fired, they are fine to be turned up, obviously, because it is therefore ceramic and no longer greenware. But in the greenware stage, these feet are quite fragile, so they do need to be looked after. It's a bit like a handle on a mug. Um, you wouldn't pick a pot up in its greenware stage by its greenware handle because you'd be left with a handle and the pot would be on the floor. And it's the same with the wonky pot. Um, I wouldn't yet put the weight of the pot onto the legs. So um, this is now set up, as I say, um, and I'm just going to recheck by holding the weight of the pot, but nonetheless putting the wonky onto its legs, um, how wonky it is. Um, and it's actually, it's not too bad because obviously we made the feet the same length. So I'm just going to refine the bottom of my feet, which are a little bit lumpy at the moment. So I'm just going to use a small grater. This is actually a garlic grater. Um, I use this quite a lot to um, just refine edges. I find it's, um, it's not as aggressive as the shore form. It kind of takes just a little bit off at a time, which I find quite useful. So I'm just holding the feet and just taking off the very bottom where it's a little bit, a little bit lumpy, but not too bad. And again, when you're doing yours, you can spend a little bit more time just refining your edges and what have you. So I'm just making sure that this is going to sit on its feet. Okay. Just grating the very bottom of the thingy. Okay. Um, and then if you've watched my channel before, you'll have seen me use a scrubby. Um, and this is just a dishwashing green scrubby pan scrubber. Uh, they're, they're much better when they get a little bit worn and they become a little bit softer to use with clay. Now this clay at the moment is still too wet to really give it a good scrubby. Um, but for the purposes of the video, I'll just show you what I'm going to do. This chopped edge on the top is not particularly um, attractive. So I'm just going to run the scrubby round the surface at the top. I'll just do a little section so that you can see. So I'm not adding any water. I'm just dry scrubbing this section across the top here. 
okay so that's just taken off the very sharp edge if you look at this section here where it's still square it's just taken off just a tiny bit um, on the edge and I will indeed finish doing that once this pot is drier really it could do with waiting overnight um, for me to do the rest of the scrubbing on this surface but there, as I say there is a video on the channel um, called something about professional edges I'll, I'll put a link up for you so that you can link across to that video all right so um, inside I'm just going to flatten that out just a little bit um, and that really is your lot so um, as I say I'm going to put my wonky pot down onto the board upside down so he's not stood on his feet I'm going to leave him until tomorrow and then I will scrubby the edges when he's a little bit drier. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Um, it is one of those things that, as I say, you can completely personalise in any way that you want to decorate in any way. Uh, this one has been done using silicone moulds. And again, there's another video on the channel about how to use silicone moulds. Um, so, you know, you really can do all sorts of things. This one has been done, as I was saying earlier, with a lustre finish with the textured stamps that we used on the demonstration piece earlier. And then it's been glazed and then lustre fired. Um, so the Wonka Pot template is available on the Etsy shop, as I say. Um, it's made out of craft foam, so it's washable. Um, so you'll be able to use it time and time again. Um, so I hope that you've enjoyed it. Come back next time and see what's going on at the Pottery Corner. Bye for now, everybody.